prepared to answer whatever questions you have. And again, I appreciate you coming coming because that's kind of the uh, the reason we make the film is to have uh, an audience and so people could enjoy it. So very much appreciate your support and appreciate for having us, showing us a, a great time and, and letting us uh, bring the movie to you guys. So uh, anybody has any questions, like I said, we're here and we'll be happy to ask. But well, right actually, he, he oh, I'm first. sorry. <laughs> we'll go for Noah. How would you like working with uh, Morgan Fairchild? Oh, the question was, um, how did I like working with Morgan Fairchild? It was awful. I hated it. <laughs> she was amazing. Um, we actually got to work with Morgan. We had her for one day, like half a day, really. Um, so we had her for six hours, and uh, I pretty much attached myself at the hip to Morgan and kind of uh, listened to every anecdote and story that I could, and she was full of amazing stories. She's worked with, you know, everybody in Hollywood for the last 40 years. So um, it was it was pretty awesome, and uh, she she had so many tips and, and things that she shared with Houston and myself, and um, I kind of was a sponge that day. So it was really fantastic to work with her. Hi, everyone. I just want to introduce you to uh, my partner of 13 years. Matt Solari, and uh, he definitely deserves a round of applause for that. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, he was kind enough to uh, let us go into the bank account and make a movie. As I said, after we did uh, the first film we did uh, last year called Is It Just Me, and uh, thank you for that Anna White moment. And uh, I said, you know, how about to make it, make another movie, and can can we do that? And uh, he said, you know what, let's let's make it happen. So um, he's the person you really should be thanking for, for the movie. Uh, but we've got some DVDs, uh, courtesy of TLA, the distributor of Visit Just Me. So uh, I've got four more. So when, when you ask a question, you know, Matt will, Matt will uh, hand those out. So I just wanted to, to let you know that. Um, but we'll, we'll move over and then we'll get Sean. you. Sean. 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 <laughs> no, uh, you play game very well, amazingly, actually. As a heterosexual actor, what attracted you to play this role? Um, well, I I read the I, well, I got the um, script, and to me, the most important thing about any role or any script or story, whether I'm an audience member or I'm uh, playing a role in the film or play or whatever, uh, is relationship. And uh, what I enjoyed about this story so much, and is it just me? And I think what what JC does so well in his writing is he writes a relationship. And to me what I've said is it doesn't matter if it's a gay relationship or a straight relationship, it's a relationship and it's something that everybody can relate to, hopefully. And that's what really drew me to the project and to the role of Gabe. So I have him to thank for that because, you know, I think that the way you realize or write a relationship, anybody can kind of tap into that and take from it. You know, we all have a something is relatable to that, which a lot of, you know, a lot of scripts don't do. So that is what drew me to the role, and it didn't matter to me what, what the relationship was. If it's something that I can relate to, I can hopefully completely dive in, so. Um, how long was the shoot, and what was the hardest part of the shoot? The shoot was 12 days, and um, the hardest part is to get all the coverage. You really have to be strategic when you when, when you do a micro budget film uh, like this. Uh, you know, time is well, in anything, time is money, and, and we could only literally afford to, to shoot for 12 days. So it's really in the pre-production and really getting uh, everything to to know exactly what you have to shoot, so you're not overshooting, and uh, you can get as much on the screen as possible to tell a story for the audience to feel like they're really watching a movie and they're getting, you're getting the coverage, you're getting the performances, uh, but you're staying on your timeline. And, and I have every sh every shot broken down to what I need in that hour. So I'll, I'll look at my, because I I, um, I look at this, this, my schedule as, as I'm directing, I'm like, all right, if I don't get this shot now, we're not going to get it and we're never going to get it. So uh, sometimes, Somebody will be uh, like, oh, you know, we had we had a, one of the one of the actors who couldn't find some wardrobe, and he's like, I don't have a wardrobe. It's like we don't, you know, I can't do this without the clothes that we're. And I was like, you have the clothes or you have the shot. So no one's going to notice that that 
piece of wardrobe was, I don't remember what it was, his pants or something. Um, <laughs> Nobody would have that. Nobody would have that. So, yeah, so I was like, we just got to get it. So let's just, uh, you know, let's make it a medium shot. <laughs> and, uh, let's do it. So, uh, yeah, that's the hardest part. The challenge is to stay on schedule when you have a, a very limited amount of days. And you know that you have no more money to add to the back of it to get another day right. uh, to pick that up. So that's, that's the challenge. Yes. What was your inspiration for doing this for you? Yeah, I had a couple of inspirations. Um, one of the inspirations was uh, when I made the movie It's Just Me, there's an older character named Ernie, and he, he talks about his, love, his lost relationship and his lost love, and his name is Marshall. And I thought, well, it would be kind of interesting to explore his relationship and how it fell apart all those years ago. So that was kind of a jumping off point. I wanted to tell a story about a relationship, because most romantic comedies, it's about two people who should be together and watching the anxiety of getting them together, hopefully, towards the end of the movie. But in this, I said, well, what would it be like to have a relationship fall apart, and then they have to fight to get back together again? So that was kind of a unique challenge. And then um, I was working over at E! Uh, e! Television, and I did uh, an interview with um, Jonathan. Jonah Hill. <laughs> I always forget his name and uh, forget me to the Greek. And he was talking about on set how um, Jared Apatow was, was basically saying, look, you guys got to put all the electronics away and get to know each other because they got immersed in their technology. And I realized myself, you know, Matt, Matt comes home from work and he's, he's on the iPad, I'm on the computer, and we're, you know, we do that all the time. In fact, your first shot, I was like, holy oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, it's really important. Uh, you know, we, I'm older and, and, you know, I've had a foundation in, in, in being social. But a lot of the young people are missing that, that ability to socialize. And they're, they're becoming dependent on these, these devices to meet people and to, to uh, interact. And I thought, well, maybe it would be interesting to, to uh, I hate to call it a cautionary tale, but to kind of explore... Um, an older couple who, uh, a couple who, who had an older relationship and, and how, because they lacked the, the servicing of it, uh, what, what could transpire and, and how that device could potentially get them together again. Inspired by, uh, I always love the, Clar uh, the Clarence character, it's a wonderful life, so this is kind of my, my Cupid-esque, uh, uh, you know, Clarence type of uh, angel. So those are the jumping off points for, for the inspiration of the story. Yes? For both of you, do you have other projects uh, you're working on right now? Uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm writing. I'm trying to write a new script um, for the next project. Uh, in my perfect world, I'm going to do another film. Um, you know, it, along, along the, the tone of this, because I enjoy the genre, so I'm going to, I want to make another film like uh, a romantic comedy. And then I think, in the back of my head, that I'm going to do. Uh, after that, I want to do Ecupa 2.0. That's why I left it off like this, and I want to do the sequel to this. And then, um, in addition to Noah and I are, are developing some stuff, I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, JC and I are working on developing uh, other scripts uh, to kind of uh, produce and uh, create my own work for myself uh, together. So we're working on that and uh, reading scripts, and television season is just getting started back up uh, in Los Angeles. So. Uh, doing the grind, yeah. Thank you. I had a question back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. The question was, um, do I feel that I would be limited at all playing a straight role, I mean playing a gay role as a straight man as far as other opportunities in acting? Um, no, because uh, I've you know already played several roles in my career, and, and I think um, I, I didn't look at it that way going in. I, like I said, I looked at it as a relationship, and I I think that um, there's so many different media, there's so much different media these days, and so many different outlets, um, and, and so much material for people to see. I, I think it's easier for for producers or directors or whomever to see previous work that an, act, that an actor has done. So, you know, if somebody were to come in and see this film or any other film or television show that I've done, um, they could then, if they're interested, go back and look at other other things I've done. But I, I didn't look at it that way or any role. I go into a role and approach it 
uh, you know, for that specific, if it's something for me to, to challenge me. I, I mean, as an actor, you're always looking to grow and, and be challenged, and, and this was another challenge for me that, because um, I thought it was a great script. And I also hope that this could be um, somewhat of a, of a driving, I have friends and family through my whole life uh, in the GLBT community, and I think it's, you know, I come from the Midwest, and so a lot of people do not see a relationship or a relationship. They're unfair labels put on relationships. And so I was hoping that doing a, a project like this, it might be able to open some kind of dialogue in a light, funny kind of way uh, to see a relationship for a relationship, like I said, and not to have a label on it. So. Yeah, I've noticed this movie and the last movie pretty much have touched upon um, online dating and what can go wrong. Is there a reason why you picked that theme? I, I think the theme of online dating and, and the internet, because it, it's, I think it's so important in everyone's life nowadays. I think that you can't, you can't deny that we are wired in the sense of, uh, it's, it's become so prevalent in our social life and our dating life and who we are and, and how we uh, interact. So it's just one of those things that uh, I think that we all can relate to, we call, all can understand, and it's, it's current. You know, I, if, I could have easily have made this, if this movie were 15 years ago, 10 years ago, it would have been like Clarence, it would have been, you know, a, a friendly ghost or, or, or a guardian angel or Tinkerbell or whatever. But nowadays, it seems that if Cupid were to come by, come, come to, into somebody's life, they would come through the technology. Morgan, Morgan, <laughs> Morgan, 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 the very first project that I did that you could see it was a um, mm -hmm. online, it was an NBC uh, soap called Coastal Dreams. And believe it or not, I was the villain. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was, it was uh, actually the first network um, online series. It was you know, maybe 2007, I think. So uh, that was the first thing uh, that I did that can be seen, other than, you know, s student films and uh, short films and, and making my doing my own things with with friends that are writers and producers and directors. So, uh, but that was the first kind of out there thing. And if I if I could just take one more minute to uh, just to make a uh, I guess you'd call it an appeal. We have no uh, independent film really does not have money marketing and budget or, or advertising. So really, you guys are our best advertising and marketing. So if you do enjoy the film. Um, Please tell your friends and, and put it on Facebook and Twitter. If you don't, then keep it to yourself. Yes, like like the movie on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Friend, us, friend us on Facebook. Yeah. And yes, thank you. And then we uh, we actually what we uh, we did is we made an app. Uh, it's on, only available on iTunes for the iPhone, but we did create an app called Eat Cupid, and you could download that. And unfortunately, it's 99 cents because I've got to pay the programmer who programmed it. So, uh, <laughs> but it's a really fun app, and uh, Morgan Fairchild will tell you if you found true love or not, and it'll <laughs> take the screenings and, and the website and the trailer, and it's really kind of fun. You can carry Morgan in your pocket with you exactly. everywhere you go. So, so yeah, please friend us. It's uh, YouTube. Uh, Facebook.com slash you keep it the movie and the website you keep it the movie and uh, become our friends, keep up with it and uh, tell tell your friends if you uh, if you dug the film and, and we're screening tomorrow so your friends can come tomorrow. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate the